Today we are going to discuss about the etiology of myeloclusion. Under the etiology of myeloclusion, we are going to discuss about uh, graver classification of etiologic factors, the prenatal causes of myeloclusion and postnatal causes of myeloclusion. And the prenatal causes of myeloclusion, we are going to uh, study about intrauterine fetal molding, teratogens and their effects, role of genetics in etiology of myeloclusion and Butler's field theory. And under the postnatal causes of malocclusion, we will see the developmental reasons, functional and environmental. The Graeber classification of etiologic factors, it is divided into general factors and local factors. The general factors are heredity, congenital defects like cleft palate and environmental which is studied under prenatal and postnatal. In the prenatal, it could be trauma or German measles. In the postnatal, it could be birth injury, cerebral palsy or TMJ injury. Next is the predisposing metabolic climate and diseases that is endocrine imbalance, metabolic disturbances. Then because of the nutritional deficiency, maybe because of the pressure habits and functional aberrations like abnormal sucking, thumb sucking, tongue thrusting. It could be because of the posture or it could be because of the trauma and accidents. The local factors of etiology of malocclusion are the anomalies of number, anomalies of tooth size, anomalies of tooth shape, mucosal barriers, persistent frenums, premature loss of teeth, prolonged retention of teeth, delayed eruption, abnormal eruption, ankylosis, dental caries, improper restorations. The prenatal causes of malocclusion is studied under the following headings. The disturbances in embryologic development, teratogen, fetal molding, birth injuries, maternal infection, diet and metabolism, genetic or hereditary. The disturbances in embryologic development. Johnston and Bronsky have identified five stages in the craniofacial development and their related problems. Stage 1 is germ cell layer formation and initiation of organization. It is seen at the 17th day and it causes fetal alcohol syndrome. Stage 2 is neural tube formation that is 18 to 23 days. It causes anencephaly. Stage 3 is origin, migration and interaction of neural crest cells usually seen between 19 to 28 days. So, in this duration, you might come across hemifacial microsomia, hemifacial macrosomia and mandibulofacial dysostosis. The stage 4 is the organ system formation stage, where the primary palate is formed between 28 to 38 days. If there is a disturbance in this type, it might cause cleft lip and or palate and secondary palate formation between 42 to 55 days. So, in during this time, you can see other facial cleft or cleft palate. The stage 5 is final differentiation into skeletal, muscular and nervous tissue. It is usually seen from 50th day to birth. You can see achondroplasia, Krausen syndrome and Appert syndrome. Now let us see what is teratogens. Teratogens are the chemical or other agents which cross the placental barrier and produce embryologic defects. The teratogens could are aminopterin which causes anencephaly, aspirin which causes cleft lip pal palate, cigarette smoking, dilantin, valium, all these causes cleft lip and palate. 6 mercaptopurin causes cleft palate. Cytomegalovirus, which causes microcephaly and hydrocephaly. Ethyl alcohol causes central mid phase deficiency. 13 cis retinoic acid causes retinoic acid syndrome. Rubella virus causes microphthalmia, then hydrocephaly. Thalidomide causes hemifacial microsomia like features, X-radiation causes microcephaly, 
vitamin D excess causes premature suture closure. Now we will see about fetal molding or intrauterine molding. During intrauterine life, any pressure effect on rapidly growing areas lead to distortion of growth. On rare occasions, arm is pressed against the face in utero resulting in maxillary deficiency. Sometimes fetal head is flexed tightly against the chest in utero. This retards the mandibular growth due to decreased volume of amniotic fluid. The restriction of the mandible forces the tongue upwards and therefore closure of the palate is stopped leading to cleft palate. This happens in Perry Robin syndrome in which micrognathia with cleft palate occurs. Next is birth injuries. During delivery, usage of forceps will damage the TM joint. This will cause retarded growth of the mandible leading to micrognathia. Maternal infection, diet and metabolism. The frequency of defects is more in children born to nutritionally deficient mothers. The important nutritional factors are calcium, phosphorus, iron, vitamin B, C and D. Next is congenital syphilis. Syphilis is derived from the infection of the mother and varieties of manifestations are present in the child. The frontal bossing hypoplastic maxilla, high arch palate, mulberry molars, Hutchinson incisors, prominent zygoma, ragged and relative mandibular prognosis. In rubella, we see dental effects of rubella are delayed eruption, hypoplasia, microcephaly and caries. In measles and chickenpox, maternal measles and chickenpox are followed by defective offsprings. Role of genetics in etiology of malocclusion. The genetic disorders are conditions that are caused due to disturbances in germ plasm or chromosomes or genes. Genetic disorders can be classified into hereditary and mutational disorders. Hereditary disorders are conditions which are transmitted from one generation to another. Following are the criteria to consider any problem as a hereditary. A occurrence of disease in definite numerical proportions among individuals related descent. B is failure of disease or deformity to spread to non-related individuals. C is onset of disease without a known precipitation at a characteristic age. D is the greater concordance of disorder in identical twins. These are the four criteria for any problem to be considered as hereditary. What is mutational disorder? They arise in a previously unaffected individual as a result of damage to the germplasm. If it gets transmitted to the future generation, it becomes hereditary. Butler's field theory. The human dentition is divided into four fields incisor, canine, premolar and molar. The most distal tooth in each field is the most susceptible to changes or variation. The changes may be absence of tooth, variation in size, shape and structure. Accordingly, lateral incisors, second premolars and third molars are the most variable in their group. This is called Butler's field theory. This theory does not apply in lower anterior region where mandibular central incisor is more, co more commonly missing than lateral and canine is the least variable tooth in the arch. Postnatally, the causes of malocclusion can be classified under three headings. The developmental deficiencies, functional disturbances and environmental interferences. Under developmental deficiency, it could be because of endocrine disturbances which lead to achondroplasia, hypo or hyperthyroidism or hypo or hyperparathyroidism. Under the nutritional deficiencies can lead to scurvy, rickets and beriberi may lead to deficient maxilla, disturbed eruption of teeth and irregular dental arches. Next is allergy which may lead to mouth breathing and related malocclusion. 
then comes muscular activity the loss of muscle due to injury or nerve damage results in retarded growth of that part and muscle weakness due to cerebral palsy and causes vertical displacement and severe open bit then is tmj problems trauma and or ankylosis in early life may interfere jaw growth and alignment of the teeth now coming to the functional disturbances it could be because of the head posture mouth breathing tongue posture tongue thrusting abnormal swallowing it could be because of the functional shifts sucking and other habits all this will discuss uh, will be discussed in detail in the habits chapter for example in mouth breathing it alters the posture of tongue jaws and head wherein the tongue occupies a lower posture mandible drops and head tips back this alters the equilibrium of pressure to jaw and teeth and forces from buccinatal mechanism is not counteracted and causes adenoid phase or long phase syndrome in the under the environmental factors of malocclusion it can be classified as disturbances of dental development that could be missing malformed supernumerary supplemental teeth delayed or ectopic eruption and early loss of primary teeth or it could be trauma to teeth and bone it could be a mucosal barrier that is frenal attachment and soft tissue impaction dental caries the disturbances of dental development that is missing teeth could be anodontia there is total absence of teeth oligodontia absence of many teeth hypodontia absence of few teeth or extra tooth that is hyperodontia supernumerary teeth are malformed or conical or multicusp in form more common in maxilla incisor region most of the times it is unerupted and it is due to hyperactivity of dental lamina example mesodens supplemental tooth it resemble normal tooth common in mandible always erupts and causes crowding and irregularity gemination or twinning is responsible for supplement the malformed teeth anomalies of tooth size and shape arise due to disturbances morpho differentiation stage of tooth development the variation in size is most common in maxillary lateral incisor followed by second premolars the gemination or twinning is a single tooth bud divides into two the fusion is two tooth buds unite to form a single tooth delayed eruption there are two mechanisms involved in the tooth eruption resorption of deciduous roots and overlying bone guidance of the erupting tooth into the path created reasons for delayed eruption are presence of supernumerary teeth early loss of primary tooth and dense sclerotic bone mucosal barrier endocrine disorder and ankylosis of primary teeth ectopic eruption could be due to arclin deficiency the retained root fragment of primary tooth may also cause ectopic eruption the early loss of primary teeth two important functions of the primary teeth are it acts as a space maintainer for the successor it maintains the opposite tooth in the occlusal level the premature loss of primary tooth will result in loss of space and also dearrangement of occlusion the mesial rift of the permanent first molar after early loss of primary second molar contributes to crowding in the posterior region the retained deciduous teeth reasons for retained deciduous teeth are the absence of permanent successor the ectopic eruption of permanent teeth the impacted permanent teeth the presence of odontome ankylosis of primary tooth hypothyroidism trauma can affect either jaws or teeth or both the trauma to jaws causes scar or immobilization which results in loss of function and leads to retarded growth of mandible trauma to teeth causes malocclusion in three ways one damage to permanent tooth buds two drift of permanent teeth after premature loss of primary teeth three by direct injury to primary teeth high frenal attachment 
Persistence of labial frenum breaks the continuity of transeptal fibers between the central incisors leading to midline diastema. It is confirmed by Blanche test. Now what is Blanche test? It, if upper lip is retracted and is, a pull is exerted on the frenum, the interdental tissue and the area around the papilla becomes blanched or anemic. Normally excision is done when there is only 2 mm of space is left during the treatment and before final closure of the median diastema. Dental caries and improper restoration, these are, there are three ways in which dental caries may lead to malocclusion. Dental caries, that is pulp involvement where extraction of or premature loss of tooth or dearrangement of occlusion is seen. Proximal caries which reduces the arch length. Restorations if under contoured loss of contact and reduction in arch length. If over contoured then it occupies more space and irregularity. Equilibrium theory and dentition. Definition is for any object to be in same position the forces acting on it should be in equilibrium. There are four contributors to dentition. Masticatory force, soft tissue pressure, external pressure, habits and orthodontics, internal pressure as periodontal fibers and gingival fibers. Masticatory forces are heavy and transient. The duration threshold for tooth movement to occur is about 6 hours. Hence, masticatory forces do not cause any change in dentition in normal condition. The soft tissue pressure. The pressure from lips, cheek and tongue are of lesser magnitude but it is maintained for a longer duration. Therefore, tooth position is affected by these pressures. Also, the resting posture of the tongue is for longer duration and it is an important contributor of malocclusion. External pressures, prolonged habits and continuous orthodontic forces are the source of external pressure and both can alter the position of the teeth. The internal pressure is a periodontal fibers, it take part in active stabilization of the tooth. Gingival fibers, that is transeptal fibers causes opening of the space after active orthodontic treatment because the fibers pull the tooth to its original position. The conclusion is intermittent forces have minimal effect on the dentition and jaw while light continuous or long lasting force have an impact on the position of dentition and size of the jaw. To conclude under the topic of etiology of malocclusion we studied about Graves classification of etiologic factors prenatal causes of malocclusion and postnatal causes of malocclusion. Keep watching these videos on YouTube and please subscribe to my channel for further updates about orthodontics and orthodontic classes.